Hi there, this video is gonna show you how to do a garage door opener installation. So my garage door opener went bad and I figured, hey, why don't I shoot a video and show you how I did it. So I'm gonna be installing a Chamberlain garage door opener. If you look online, Chamberlain garage door openers get awesome reviews and that's one of the reasons why I chose mine. So let's get to it. If you need to do this fix on your garage door, stay tuned, there are a ton of great tips and I think that you'll really enjoy this video. Let's get to it. All right, if you already have a garage door opener, you're gonna to have to remove the old one before you put the new one in. So let's get on to that. Unplug the garage door opener by pulling the plug from the outlet, then pull the cover off, the light cover off that is, that will reveal the wiring and the light bulbs. So what you wanna do, this looks like a little bomb, but you, you wanna take a picture of this because those wires which run along the ceiling here attach to different things. The white wires connect to the sensors that stop the door from opening and closing if somebody should go underneath it. The brown colored wires oftentimes connect to different switches like this switch on the wall. So again, either take a smartphone or a normal camera and take a picture of that wiring. Then you can undo it using a screwdriver. As you can see here, all it does all you need to do is unscrew the terminals and you can label the wires if you want to. Also, remove the light bulb. So what you want to do next is put a box on top of a ladder so that it supports the weight of the garage door opener because we're going to be unbolting the garage door opener from the supports. Then the last thing you need is for it to fall on your head. Once the garage door is supported by that box, you can loosen any of the nuts and bolts on the brackets using a socket and a socket wrench. So that's what I'm doing here. And it's cool because what you do is you just pull the bolts out and, and the box will support the garage door opener. Disengage the emergency release and pull the, the clevis pin and the ring fastener. Now you're gonna carefully lower the garage door opener. Carefully remove the box from underneath the garage door opener, lower the opener to the ladder, and then move the ladder out of place and lower the entire garage door opener to the floor. This is really, really simple and easy to do. So what you'll have to do next is remove the clevis pin and ring fastener from the bracket on the header that's right above your garage door. This way you'll be able to totally disengage the entire garage door opener unit and move it out of place, out of the way, so that you'll be able to work on the new garage door opener. If you look online, Chamberlain garage door openers always get good reviews, and that was a huge reason why I chose this one right here. I chose the Chamberlain Whisper Drive because it's a steel reinforced belt instead of a chain drive. And that makes the garage door opener super quiet. And that's exactly what I wanted. So take the garage door opener out of the box, put it on a towel and set the rails to the side too. There are five pieces to the rail system. And there's a window on the front rail that's gonna be for a pulley. I'll explain that a little bit later. There's also a tab that needs to face up. So make sure that this tab is facing up when you put the rails together. So put the rails together by hand. If you have trouble doing this, you can use a rubber mallet to lightly, <laughs> lightly tap them together. So set that aside, put it on top of the garage door opener, put a box on the floor and rest the rail on top of the box. Put a, uh, a screwdriver into the hole in the rail and double check that the trolley here has four plastic tabs in it because those tabs allow the trolley to move smoothly on the rail. Also make sure that it's oriented the correct way before you slide it onto the rail. So you can slide the trolley onto the rail, slide it the whole way down to that screwdriver. It'll just sit there for the time being. Put the U-bracket in place and if you have trouble doing this you can use a rubber mallet to tap it onto the rail. It might also help to have the garage door opener facing the right way. Take the quarter inch bolt and lock washer slash nut, put it into the rail and tighten it down. This is really important. Now there are a nut and a bolt on the top of the garage door opener itself. Loosen them using a socket wrench. 
Place the U-bracket over those holes and tighten it down to the garage door opener using that same exact socket wrench. I want to say use a half inch drive for this. So make sure that they're nice and snug. Don't over tighten them, but make sure that they're nice and snug. Now you're going to install the idler pulley. It's this little pulley that looks like this and it's got a piece of tape on top of it. Feed the belt drive, or not the belt drive, but the belt through that little window in the front rail. Make sure that you have about one, or excuse me, about one foot of, of the belt in there. And then take the nut, the washer, and the bolt for the idler pulley. And that idler pulley, again, should have plenty of grease in it. If it doesn't, you should put the grease in that little hole. But slide the bolt through and tighten down the washer and the nut using a socket wrench, or whatever you have, whatever tool you have on hand, but make sure that that's tight enough such that the idler pulley isn't going anywhere, but the pulley ha still has some play in it, like like I'm showing here. What you want to do now is that tab. You'll want to bend it upwards at a 90 degree angle using a screwdriver, and if you need to, you can bend it even more using a set of pliers. Attach the belt to the trolley like so. And then what you'll do next is make sure that that trolley moves smoothly, but also feed the belt around the entire garage door opener, around the pulley on the opposite end that's actually attached to the, to the garage door opener. And then you'll have these, this pin system that you need to put in place to connect this spring and this rod. So take the rod out from the spring, you'll have to unscrew it, like so, and this has an orientation to it. There's a flat side to it that fits into the frame of the trolley. And you wanna make sure that that's oriented correctly before you attached, attach this rod to the belt. Okay, so just double check the orientation of that rod. But again, take this pin system, put it all together, like I'm showing you here, and make sure that that rod is nice and tight because that's what's going to pull, help pull the belt along the, the rail system. Tighten that down, re-screw the spring back in place. Make sure you're, it's finger tight so that you have space between your finger and the belt and the rail. Again, just make sure the tension is nice and good. Then what you'll do is you'll tighten it down even more using a wrench and what that'll do is that'll make that spring pop by one quarter inch and tighten the belt exactly to the right tension. So again, you'll put a cap over the drive on the garage door opener, tighten it down using the two screws that come with it, and you're on to the next step. Grab your level, put it in the center of the garage door, and make a horizontal pencil mark on the header. Push the garage door up to the highest position, then make a second mark, horizontal mark, that intersects your vertical pencil mark. You want to try to put the brackets in the center of the door, but in this case, the door, my garage door, there's a, a ventilation shaft running right in the center where I would put the bracket uh, for the actual garage door opener. So I can't mount it in the center and the directions allow you to offset it a certain amount. So follow your directions for offsetting any kind of mounting brackets. Again, just make sure that that horizontal pencil mark intersects the center mark, or you can move it over where you wanna place the support bracket. So in this case, I needed to make a second horizontal pencil mark two inches above the first one, because that's where the bracket is going to go. Mark your pencil marks, drill the holes through your header, and then make sure that the bracket is facing up, like so. What you'll do is you'll put those lag screws into the holes by hand and then tighten them down either using an impact driver or socket wrench. Take your clevis pin and ring fastener, you're going to need these, and then lean the garage door opener up against that bracket that's on the header. So you can see my bracket's a little offset. Take the clevis pin, slide it through the bracket and through the garage door and put the ring fastener in place like I'm showing you right here. This will allow the garage door opener to be nice and secure to the bracket. Place the garage door opener on a ladder, and then, I got kind of lucky here, I was able to put that same box underneath the new one, 
and support the new garage door opener while I reposition the brackets on it. So I was able to use these brackets and just slide them over to the left and to the right and then secure them using my socket wrench. One thing I want to make perfectly clear is that these brackets, these support brackets, they need to be screwed into joists, not just drywall, because that's super dangerous. And eventually your garage door opener will fall on top of your car or you, so I wouldn't want that to happen. So again, make sure that these brackets going into the ceiling are going into joists, are being secured to joists. Slide the emergency release rope through the trolley and make sure that the, the red handle is facing the correct way. There is a correct way for how it should be facing, but that's pretty simple. There should be a support bracket on your garage door. What you'll want to do is make sure that your garage door is totally down and flush with the floor. Pull down on the emergency release rope, and there are two brackets that come with the garage door opener, a straight one and a curved one. You're gonna install the straight bracket first into the trolley using a clevis pin and ring fastener. It should look something like this, and it'll just hang there while you attach the curved bracket, or excuse me, curved arm to the bracket on your garage door. Again, you'll just be using a clevis pin and ring fastener to do that. Now, the straight arm can be very, very long especially if you've got a setup like mine. So I tried using a hacksaw to trim it according to the directions. That did not work so well. So I used my oscillating multi-tool to cut through it and it worked awesome. So if you encounter the same thing, you may want to use your oscillating multi-tool to cut through that straight arm. Grab a, a nut, a washer, and a bolt. Actually, you're going to need two to attach the straight arm and the curved arm together. You can hand tighten those and then tighten them down using a socket wrench because this is what pulls the garage door on the, on the, on the rail system. So re-engage the trolley like it did here and put a light bulb or two light bulbs into your garage door opener. You can wire it. And the cool thing about the Chamberlain system is that the wires just slide right into the terminals. It's really, really, really simple. You'll have to follow the directions according to your wiring setup though. Plug the garage door opener in. The light bulbs will blink three or four times. Press the garage door opener and check and see how it runs along the track. In this case, it was smooth, quiet, and worked out great. So that's why I really, really like this particular Chamberlain garage door opener. Well, there you go. That's how you do a garage door opener installation. Yours might be a little bit different than mine because I'm using a Chamberlain, but again, these Chamberlain garage door openers get a ton of awesome reviews. So you may want to check it out. Check one out for yourself, that is. And if you like this video and you think it'll help somebody else, go ahead and click on the thumbs up button. That always helps because not only is it helping me, but it's helping somebody else out to watch the video and maybe they're going through this same DIY installation. So do that and also if you don't mind go ahead and subscribe if you want more videos for yourself and for your own home because a new DIY video comes out every single Friday from me to you and they're meant to help you out and be a little bit fun in the process. So thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. I hope you have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.